Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Up at Dogwood Trace, and I am working on putting out six new Mexican plum trees. But as most things are up here, we have to work to do that. We have to cut out some areas in the edge of a right of way so that they'll get plenty of sun, and we're going to put them in there. Young Michael, my neighbor, and I are going to do that. Thought you might be interested in coming along with us. Right there in front of you is a wild plum tree, and we cut around it this year. Put a pink ribbon on it, I think you can see there from the bottom. And it has really come on. It's twice as big as it was earlier in the year. Literally twice as big. So right in here, we're going to cut out some of that smaller brush. And we're going to leave, obviously going to leave those big trees back in there. But we're going to cut out between these big trees right back over to down there. And we're going to put two more trees right in here. It's amazing what 30 minutes, 40 minutes can do with a chainsaw. And see, right over here is our last apple tree. And we'll move right in there and right in there and put those two Mexican plums in there and they'll get plenty of sun and do real well right here. Well, an hour and 20 minutes. Excuse me, two hours and 20 minutes. And we got all this cleared off right here to be able to put these two trees in tomorrow. Good day's work. Good afternoon's work. How you feeling, Michael? Feeling good, sir. Um, we worked ourselves hard, didn't we? Yes, sir. And it's very, very tiring. <laughs> yeah, it looks easy when you're watching it. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We did some work, though, didn't we? Yes, sir. We sure did. Well, more tomorrow. All right? Sir, have a good afternoon, everybody. Um, hope you enjoyed the video, and this is Returning to Basics. Well, here we are, everyone, on day two, out on the Mexican Plum Planning Project. I'm at one of my deer hunting stand areas where I have a my food plot, as you can see, and you've seen this area before. It's where I have my summer food plot growing, and it's doing really well. I have a good stand of clover. And I have these six Mexican plums from Native Nursery. They emailed me the other day, told me that they had... A new stock of Mexican plums. I emailed them back, told them I wanted six, bought the six from them. Let's open them up and see what they look like. Oh, beautiful. Look at that. That's some nice looking trees right there. So I'm going to get those opened up, get a couple of holes dug right over in there, get them planted. I'll come back to you and show you after I get the wire and the post up around them. These are some beautiful trees and look how they've been sent. They were propagated in uh, pots and we got the whole root ball. They are really nice specimens. There they are. These are the two up at my four-way food plot and hunting area. Look at there. I was lucky enough to be able to go to my local Orslan Farm and Home when I was in there yesterday to get those six and a half foot T-post. And by the way, I put those in with my new gas powered post driver. It was a breeze. But look at there, I was fortunate enough, when you put that, when they put those in and you stop, you have five foot of post left. And I was able to find some five foot poultry wire. And so 
I just put them up kind of in a column instead of in a V shape this time. And the poultry wire goes all the way up. It'll really protect those. And they are beautiful looking specimens, aren't they? And I have a couple of, I hope you can see it, there you go, of these aluminum tree tags. And I'm going to put these on there so that we'll know next year or later just exactly what these are. And I'll leave a link below in the description so that you can see the uh, video that I did on these tree tags. You want to use these kind of tree tags on all of your plantings because you'll forget. You can remember it wasn't that long ago that I put those two trees in. And I know that the one over on the far side is a perfusion crab apple. But one of these is a Liberty and one of these is a wine sap. And I can't remember which one. <laughs> which is which. And you'd think, well, you'd be able to do that. Well, you can't. And so, let's go over here. This is my Liberty right here. And so you never have any trouble knowing what your tree is if you leave these tags on. And so these are, oops. These are a real lifesaver. And so I recommend that you use them. I put a little moat around the bottom. Hope you can see that of each of these. And I gave them a one gallon drink each one of them maybe you can see this one a little better but every time it rains now and here you go and the water runs off the side of this uh, hill here it'll pool up a little bit around this and give it a good drink and so that's what's important let's get this one tagged put it on there and twist it around good few times that way every time we come by here later to inspect it we will know that it is a Mexican plum and if you pray and I suspect most of you do pray for my plantings that they will grow and prosper and do well and I'll do the same for you on all your endeavors because this is a lot of work that, that was these six trees were just a little over eleven dollars each and so let's just say uh in rough numbers let's round it up to seventy dollars and so uh seventy dollars but a hundred and fifty dollars worth of uh exclusion cages between the cost of the post and the wire and then the time. And so I know that the time is really about as much for all of us as anything. And so, you know, we want it to work and we want it to do well. And so pray that my trees will come back out. That one right there, that Liberty's coming back out. But my wine sap is not looking good at all after that real late freeze. And so hopefully it'll come back. On to the rest of the property to put out the other four. I'm ready to go. Here's the other two that I put out. They are very beautiful trees. And I put these exclusion cages around them. And if you ever wonder, should I really put these around something like this? Let me show you something here. I just recently cleared this area around here. And look at this, right there. The top of that's nipped off. The top of these are nipped off. The top of that blackberries browsed off. The top of that blackberries browsed off. The tops of those blackberries are browsed off. And so, the deer use an area like this really, really heavily. And you look at it normally, and if you don't look close, you think, well, nothing's happening and that's all growing up. But look at the tops. That's all browse. And the deer know where these things are and they find them. 
And so it's very important that that new tree, this new tree, and that that uh, tree right down there, that's my uh, new chestnut tree. My other one's right over in there. Right, right through there. They will browse them off if you don't keep them protected. And so that gives me two more Mexican plums up here with my other two that are right here in line with them. And one right over there and one right over there. Right there. And I have to put my exclusion cage around my profusion crab apple right there. And then I'll be finished with this part of the property and on to the other part. I thought you might be interested in seeing these beautiful new Mexican plums here in the orchard area of my property. So, hey, thank you for coming with me. We really appreciate you taking the time to visit us on the channel and up here at Dogwood Trace. God bless you. Have a great day.